Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my talk on Windows Phone Application Security. So, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Luca De Fulgentis. I'm the CTO at Secure Network, which is a security firm based in Milan, Italy. And uh, I used to be a web application pen tester, but nowadays I'm mostly involved in the managing, managing of our security services. And I'm also a contributor of the OWASP mobile project. And in the last two years, I share my results concerning the Windows Phone application security. And so let's start just with a little introduction. Well, as, well back in 2014, uh, I started uh, investigating and collecting a series of security issues related to the application that target the, uh, the Windows, Phone, uh, Windows Phone platform. Uh, we then tried to categorize these, these examples of insecure code, and also we mapped the, the issues against the Mobile Tone 10 for 2014, and statistic on our uh, concerning our results as we share with the OWASP mobile project you know, for definition of the top 10 for the 2015. Then we decide to extend our research because uh, uh, the, during the first step of the, of the study, we only target uh, application developed with the server light technology. Uh, so we de decide to also analyze uh, something like uh, 160 more application uh, that has been developed with the Windows Runtime uh, technology in order to cover all the, secu the security or better the insecurity or potential insecure usage of the API uh, that are provided by the Windows Phone uh, uh, SDK. So uh, the, this talk is all about the, the result of the, the study and uh, we, I will use uh, as a driver the, uh, the top 10 list for 2014 because the the one for 2015 is not yet ready. And so let's start with the first risk. The first risk is the weak server side control. When, I, uh, when I, um, I'm asked to talk about uh, Windows for in general, mobile application security, and I start with the discussion on server side security, everybody uh, simply say, but are you really kidding me? Uh, and no, I'm not kidding. Every, anyone, uh, the, the point is that uh, even in case of mobile application security, we, the server side uh, security is a very important factor. It's a very important aspect because uh, um, the backend uh, that is used by the, our uh, application code uh, um, could be directly attack, attacked by the, uh, a malicious user and if the user, if the attacker is able to steal the data that are stored on the, on the backend, most of the time, this data, are, are, uh, the, the, this data belong to the, to the mobile user itself. Moreover, the uh, backend functionality uh, could be abused uh, in order to hack into the mobile application. Once again, uh, try to steal uh, private data related to the to mobile user. But by the way, my research has only been focused on the mobile side. So let's move to the second risk, which is the insecure data storage. With the insecure data storage, we are just referring to a clear text storage of any kind of uh, sensitive, confidential, private data. Okay, so with these term, uh, terms, I'm referring to, uh, I don't know, any kind of password, username, password, so account credential, authorization token, authentication uh, token, and so on. Uh, the problem is that if we store in clear, in clear text uh, this information on our device and if the attacker or a malicious app has uh, a privileged access to the file system, well, they can um, extract this information, which are in clear text, and, and maybe they can abuse the information. So encryption is very important in this specific um, context. By the way, the Windows Phone platform, starting from the version 8, introduced the uh, BitLocker technology in order to um, provide a built-in mechanism to uh, perform the encryption of the disk. The disk. Uh, the bad news is that the BitLocker uh, feature can be enabled only if we use our device in an enterprise context. We need to plug our device in something like, uh, you know, exchange uh, something, Microsoft-related technology, magic, uh, and we have to enforce some uh, policies in order to enable this additional security feature. 
And so once again, in the Windows Phone universe, the, in, the encryption of the data which are stored on the device is a very, very important, is a crucial security requirement, in my opinion. So when we are dealing with the storage, uh, well, this is common uh, even also with the, uh, any other kind of uh, mobile platform, but with the Windows Phone, we have the, um, uh, we are, at least we can uh, uh, store information in the file system, and we already know that we have some. We need to encrypt data because uh, BitLocker is disabled by default. We starting from the version eight, uh, we can starting from the, the version eight point one, we can read and write data on the SD card. The version eight can only read the data uh, just stored on the SD card. But once again, the data are not encrypted, uh, or they, they may it could be they may be encrypted if he, if the application apply proper encryption mechanism or use a proper encryption mechanism and of course we can also use uh, uh, a kind of third party cloud services in order to, uh, to in order to store our information and we have at least two problem the first problem is the security in the transmission of the data so we, we, we hope that our data is, is transmitted over an encrypted channel, HTTPS, by using the HTTPS, for example. And we also, but we also have to take care about the security of the data which is stored on the cloud storage uh, uh, server. That's because, uh, well, in case of breach of the security of the cloud service, our data may be stored in clear text. So once again, we should also encrypt our our, our data if we, we want to, to uh, we use this kind of service, external services. By the way, um, during my research, uh, as first, uh, I tried to identify each and every location when, uh, where you can uh, um, place any kind of data. And so when you are performing uh, code review or you are a developer you to review your code, you should take care about the different places in your phone where you, 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 you may use to, to store the data. We have the local data folder, but the, the local data folder, roaming, temporary, and cache are uh, sandbox uh, uh, folders. So only my app can ask, only the app that own this folder can access this data. Uh, we also have a package installation folder. We can write data inside the, the installation folder, but we can read some we can basically read, an app can basically read its code. Uh, well, we also have other places such as, you know, the media library, once again, the SD card, or application settings file which are stored at clear text files uh, into the file system. So when uh, um, the, the previous table was referring to the Windows, phone, Windows runtime technologies, we have some differences with a server-like app. So different uh, physical path uh, and dif different files where the, the application settings, as for example, are, are placed. By the way, when we are, when we are asked to hunt for insecure data storage, my suggestion here to have a look to uh, a series of methods, classes, and property that I try to m map and then um, could be that, that represent some uh, uh, meaningful uh, keyword that it should be um, researched inside our uh, inside our code. Um, so uh, now let's move to, to an, a, a real world example of insecure data storage. In this case, we have the save credential method. The save credential method, we, which is used to to store as a in, in, um, inside the uh, application settings uh, file, the username and password which has user provide. And as I told you before, the application settings is not an encrypted file, so we are placing some confidential uh, into, the, uh, into the file system. Uh, one more example, in this case we have a save state, save state function uh, which simply save the, the cookies, uh, the session cookies of the application. Uh, once again inside the application settings, and once again in clear text. So my secure coding tips for this kind of problem is that if you have any kind of confidential or private data, you should always supply proper encryption uh, before storing the data on the device. Uh, we also have to apply this encryption for um, every kind of files. You mean, you know, 
even for local databases, uh, which are some mechanism that is provided by the, the platform. So we have the um, we have an interface uh, SQL to uh, excuse me um, link to SQL that you can use in order to um, use some local databases. Even in this case, we just the data which are stored in the, into the, the, the SD file, the SD file is the, the name of this extension of these databases, should be, should be proper encrypt. Uh, by the way, uh, the system, the, the platform also provides us the data protection API, which, which are um, a, a built-in uh, mechanism that uh, should be used to, to preserve the confidentiality of the data. And for the password storage, storage, the best option is uh, is using the password vault is using the password password vault uh, uh, class. Uh, that's because uh, the password vault is uh, storing in an encrypted way our credential in uh, segregated uh, section region of the, our file system. Okay, so we are the third third risk. We are insufficient transport layer security. It's pretty easy. We are referring to the confidentiality of the information which are exchanged between our application and the uh, backend system. So the, the system that we, the application usually is, is using to sending and receiving information. In my experience, uh, um, the, the most, uh, well, the, 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 most, the most critical, uh, the most critical issue represented uh, to the, well, to the um, uh, transmission information over an encryption, an unencrypted channel, for an example, uh, using the HTTP, HTTP protocol. Uh, it's a very common issue. It's an uh, issue at least for two reasons. As first, we can intercept the traffic, which is obviously transmitted as a, unencrypted data. And the second risk is that we can perform uh, a man in the middle attacks in order to manipulate the, tra the traffic, which is a change between the app and the backend system themselves. So uh, this is an example. Uh, you can read about this something like Italia Mobile banking up the user uh, uh, Danish backend. So uh, that a, is a real world example. And basically, we have the web browser control. And think about the browser control uh, just like a web view. Is a sort of web view for the. Um, it is, is provided by the civil light technology. We are feeding the the web browser with the content which is delivered over the HTT, with the HTTP protocol, and so basically we, the the web view will render the login HTML page. Um, if the attacker can perform a man in the middle attack against these, the 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 mobile this this kind of this mobile application, it can basically manipulate the, the layout, he can replace the, the login page, he can steal the victim while he, the victim is typing the username and password. So uh, another important issue is, uh, so we may have some, some further issue uh, with, the, with this specific risk, uh, or which, which are related to this, this, this risk. Uh, when we are dealing with the digital certificates, uh, when this, uh, starting for, or better, the Windows Phone 8 uh, implements um, a nice feature. Basically, the platform discard every kind of invalid certificate. And that's very, a very strong requirement, in my opinion. Uh, it's it's, it's not, not so bad. But uh, there is no way to disable this behavior. I mean, you can just invoke or set any kind of flag in order to disable this behavior uh, inside your app. But uh, with the introduction of the version uh, 8.1, uh, Microsoft introduced a specific uh, class that allows the, the, um, uh, the developer to disable some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, um, uh, some kind of exception related to invalid certificate. Not all of, the, of these, these exceptions, these, uh, uh, these issues can be, can be ignored, but uh, Fortunately, can be ignored, uh, but it's still uh, a way. So we, we are still to take care about how the how the, the developers uh, um, whitelisted some kind of exception because uh, because it may introduce some problem, uh, some security problem, of course. So uh, in this situation, uh, I can still see 
at least two, two way to hack into or to breed to violate the confidentiality of the exchange data. The first is, is if, if I simply send a malicious certificate to the victim and I uh, induce the victim to install the, the certificate. And the second, the second option, the second evil option would be to hack into a certificate authority and forge some valid certificate. And the way we can, we can, uh, uh, we can protect our app and our user from this kind of, uh, of threats is uh, uh, to pin the certificate, uh, pin the, the remote certificate, uh, and uh, with, with, uh, with the term, I mean, uh, um, place inside our app some information that can be used by the application itself in order to validate the remote certificate. Basically, we can embed in the app the, I don't know, the, uh, sometimes it is used the certificates, a copy of the original certificate itself, or, I don't know, the, the public key, which is used for the crypt sign, and so we can revalidate the certificate. Uh, by the way, we, uh, with the Windows Phone 8, we have some problem in implementing these, uh, this, the certificate pin. We have to use external library. That's the only option. But Microsoft introduced some classes that allow gathering the information about the, the deliver certificate and then perform the uh, desired validation. Okay, so when we have to hunt for a problem related to the, to the, trans to the transport, my best, my first uh, approach, my brutal approach is to grab for the URI uh, class and uh, um, I'm look, usually I'm looking for the use of the HTTP uh, protocol instead, instead of the HTTPS. So basically, just by grabbing your code uh, with this keyword, with the URI, I mean, uh, string, you can, you can spot a lot of bugs. Uh, by the way, there are a lot of methods that accept URI, and you can, uh, you should basically carefully audit each and every uh, of uh, your methods, uh, if, if you if you use this kind of this kind of uh, way to communicate with your remote backend, so I just uh, summarize in uh, this tab in these tables, uh, which are a different way an application may uh, communicate with a remote system, and basically the methods that I propose that I'm proposing accept the URI object uh, or. Uh, or we have some property that can be, um, can be assigned to, to URL. Okay, so uh, what's, what about the, the secure coding tips? Uh, it's pretty simple. We, we, we just have to use uh, TLS everywhere. Uh, implementing certificate pin is a, a good option even if uh, it requires some more effort in handling the, the certificate because in case of well, where you have to replace your certificate, you also have to release another application with a new embedded certificate or uh, key that used to validate certific certificate itself. So we have much more effort if we implement, but it's the only option to prevent from to 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 prevent the the, the kind of attacks that I that I show you before that I mentioned before. So let's move to the M4. M4 is an unintended unintended data leakage. That's very very simple. That's very simple. Basically, we have our operating system that leaks the data. Uh, we have this involuntary data exposure caused by some kind of side effects. The side effects that maybe I don't know system caching. Uh, system logging, so we do not have the we don't have the the, uh, the application that is writing some sensitive data inside a, a, a log.txt file, but we have a system that is logging something that may be uh, some sensitive information, an example. And the, the problem is that most of the time the developer do not do, don't know doesn't know the this uh, uh, the underlying working of the system, and so. The, the system itself be introduces these problems. And my suggestion is to have a careful look uh, to the methods that, most of, that are involved in the uh, an example when you change the state of your application, when you are deactivate, when you close the activate, when your suspend, the application is suspended. That's because when the application changes state, the method that I include in the table are invoked and uh, these methods should also implement something like a uh, uh, cleaning mechanism in order to clean, uh, I don't know, the cache data, uh, any kind of logged data, and so on. Um, 
this is an example, it's a very common example, when you, you this is the way the, the developer usually uh, implement the uh, methods that are, in, that are invoked when the application is deactivated or is, is closed. There is no implementation at all. So uh, basically, if you have an application that is using WebView, and during the life of the application, the, the application, the system itself is caching some data, and if, if we deactivate or close this application, the cache data, the cache data or, I don't know, it's the store cookies, uh, still exist uh, inside the file system. And so, the, uh, basically, what, what, what can we do? We, we have just to invoke all the method before closing, before suspending, we have to invoke the method that remove this kind of, this kind of uh, uh, information. Okay, so uh, in a, we, we are now at the M5, which, is, uh, uh, which are probably related to the authentication authorization. Um, it's something very, well, as first, uh, um, we are referring to some security decisions without the server, the server side engagement. So it's something that he, uh, a decision that he, the, the born uh, die inside our apps and in my experience, the two most common issues are authorization issue, when you have something like the, uh, related to, to the access of critical function. Cr I mean, uh, with critical, I mean uh, something which is, I don't know, uh, premium function or uh, function that allow the, uh, the access to uh, confidential data. And basically, if you can bypass the authorization mechanism of the, the app, we can access directly apps, these functionalities or data. The second, the second uh, uh, main problem, is the main issue is represented by um, the, a weak generation of authorization or authentication token. Uh, I mean, client-side generation of the token. And uh, I, I can show you some nice example. The first is, in a, is, a, uh, is a snippet of code related to a backup, uh, a contact backup application. Basically, we have this application that allows us to create a zip file containing the, all uh, our contacts. And the file is created inside our sand, the application sandbox. And also, the application is running a local web server which is listening on the port, on the port, uh, TCP port 5656. And so the user, when they, if a user won't back up the uh, contact, he, the, the user just have to point the browser to the web server and download the zip file. The problem is that there is no authentication, the access of this web server, or better, the file that contains our contact. So if the attacker can connect to the web server while the web server is running, the attacker can download a zip file without providing any kind of uh, information, any kind of uh, account credential. So this is a, an example of uh, authentication issue uh, with the, with the client-side uh, client code. By the way, uh, that's another very common problem, I mean the generation of authorization token. In this case, we have, uh, we have uh, basically a static, uh, static secret I mean, embedded secret, so every, every, everyone can simply download the app and decompile the app and then access the secret, so it's not a secret at all. It's just a, a string inside the code. Um, and so we have this string which is concatenated with, I don't know, a parameter, but can be tampered. And the, the resulting string is then hashed with the MD5 vibrating. And the, 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 the resulting string is then used as a, an, an authentication, authentication tokens. So the problem is that, as I told you before, the, the attacker may download the app, may reverse the logic, and then may forge valid, and valid authorization token in order to violate the security of the backend. So for when we have to hunt for this kind of uh, with this kind of mechanism this kind of issue uh, my suggestion to have a look to uh, to methods uh, classes and properties that um, are available to obtain any kind of uh, some data that uh, may identificate the, the device by itself such as the name of the device some hardware ID uh, I also, I'm also suggesting to look for the use of fashion function. So the, the, I think that 
this, this table, these tables are a sort of tool that we can use uh, while inspecting our, analyzing our code. So uh, sometimes, in my experience, most of the time when we add an action function, well, there's something wrong. <laughs> so maybe not, but we, we should have a careful look at what, 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 why the developer used the, 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 the specific uh, algorithm for hashing something. Uh, geolocation coordinates are, are also used to, um, to authenticate users sometimes as a weak me mechanism, so we, we still have to be sure that this information are not, uh, not, uh, are not involved in authentication or authorization processes. Okay, so we have uh, our, our secure coding tips. Uh, the first is that, well, yeah, I don't want you to generate, client-side generate authorization or authentication mechanism. Okay, that's another, it's, it's a, a good rule. But if you have to identify, I mean identify, not authenticate your device, uh, my suggestion is to use the, the publisher, the, basically this property, because this property is unique per device and per uh, publisher. While the device unique ID is, only, is unique, unique only, only per device. So if you have a good app and a malicious app, mm -hmm. and if the good, good application is using the hardware identification, I mean the one uh, uh, which is only unique uh, per device to authenticate, against, to the, to the, to authenticate uh, uh, itself against uh, a remote system. And we also have another malware application on the same device. The malware application can extract, can just read the, the value of the, the unique per device uh, string, and so it, it, the application can then forge the, auth the authentication. Uh, the application holds the authentication uh, token. It wants, so it can just violate the authentication of the remote system. If you have a, a pair device and a pair publisher um, information, uh, well, the malware should be the should also be published by the the, the, the original publisher. So the, the the attack scenario is something like you have to hack into the publisher account uh, and then you have to publish uh, a, uh, you have to, pu to to publish an applica malware application that trigger the user to also install the other application or something. A bit crazy. By the way, let's move to the uh, M6, uh, which is referred to the broken cryptography. And we have uh, two different, um, two different aspects related to the, to the broken cryptography. The first is, uh, is the use of uh, weak cryptography. Uh, we, the weak cryptography, I mean, both the, the use of uh, uh, custom custom encryption uh, algorithms, uh, the use of uh, vulnerable encryption algorithms, an example of broken, broken ones, uh, exotic way to encrypt, uh, ex exotic strategies to encrypt data, uh, I'll show you an example. And uh, we, we may also have some problems related to the encryption process. An example, if you store the key of our, um, the encryption key, in, uh, I don't know, the same place where the, the data that we are encrypting is placed, or if you store the key inside in a safe area of the file system, or once again, if you embed the key inside our code. As I told you before, if you place a secret inside the code, uh, that's not a secret. You are just giving anyone the, the, the secret itself. Uh, by the way, so a, a, a simple example, a common example is used, uh, as I told you the, before, uh, is the use of the an embedded key, embedded key, which is then used for the, uh, well, for the, for the, uh, okay, generation of a uh, key and initialization vector, definitely encrypt with the asymmetric algorithm, uh, something that is, uh, so. W once again, if you, if you, if you add this kind of solution, well, we are, we are not properly encrypting our our data. Um, and this is the, 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 the uh, famous example of exotic, exotic uh, um, encryption when, where the, the, the user, or better, the developer, is using the UTF-8 encoding for encrypt the data which are then stored on the, the I don't know, the, okay, is the uh, some system, no, application uh, settings, something like that. So, 
well, this is not a contribution at all. But okay, when, when we have to hunt for, when we have to hunt for, sorry, when we have to hunt for this kind of problem, um, well, once again, we have to look for the hashing function because uh, hashing is not encryption, and uh, well, we have to, to have a careful look at this kind of uh, this kind of uh, this kind this kind of algorithm. Moreover, we have to look at the the use of uh, symmetric encryption uh, uh, algorithms because uh, most of the time the developer also embed the key of the, the algorithm, and also have a look to places where the encoding is used maybe to encrypt. Uh, uh, <laughs> Reserve information. Well, I have a mantra for you for today, for your life, uh, which is do not store even encrypted critical data on device. Even if uh, this kind of mantra will destroy the, uh, can I say, the, the, the user experience of your app, you, you know, it's a trade off. That's my mantra for today. Another mantra is serialization. In general, encoding is just a data or better information representation is not encryption. Okay, so uh, once again, the use of built-in mechanisms such as the data protection API should be the best way to, to, to encrypt as, and then store our data on the, the mobile device. Okay, now we are on the client side injection. Client side injection the same inje are very, very similar to the server side one. We still have an interpreter. We and we have, uh, uh, if we have an issue, we are uh, capable to to fed to feed the to fed the interpreter with some untrusted data and modify the behavior of the, the interpreter in order to violate the confidentiality or the integrity of the handled data uh, or the data which which are which which are handled by the, the interpreter or the underlying system. We have different kind of part, the of uh, injection client side injection depending on the the um, type of uh, information that the representation information that we are parsing, we are executing, or the, the, the syntax of the command that we are providing to the providing to the interpreter. Okay, so um, most in, in my experience, uh, we have to you know, I try to, to divide the, the table for the hunting. Uh, uh, basically, in uh, what we have to to look for when we are we are um, Looking for the HTML JavaScript injections, we have to carefully look at the web browser controls for the Silverlight technology, the web view for the Windows runtime. We may also have the XML injection or any other kind of attack against the XML parser, so basically validation and we should disable the DTD parsing. Uh, the same for the XML and also for the SQL. Uh, well, for the SQL, for the uh, web, we, SQLite is not provided by, by default, uh, but we have external libraries that can be imported and used to, to perform, to store data using, a, um, using an implementation of SQLite. And so I just uh, summarize the methods that accept a, a SQL statement as a string, a string that can be concatenated with untrusted data. It should be validated before providing to the method is, uh, itself themselves the, this, inf this information. Same for the, the, the methods and classes that handle the name of files because we want to, uh, we want to avoid any kind of injection, um, puff injection, something like that. Well, an ex just, uh, just a final example on XSA, this was an application that basically uh, is accepting some user, user type data and simply concatenate this information to this uh, HTML, uh, uh, the, the body of these uh, HTML page, pages, which is then provided to navigate to screen that simply uh, populate the web browser view with the, this, this HTML data. So we can type in XML, um, what else? We, we can, um, can find the words, uh, we have to just uh, type an XSS payload inside the, the form of our application and we can just, just pop up an alert. Uh, or in, uh, sometimes we can also read the data which is stored on, on, the, on the file system. Okay, final tips, uh, very simple. Validation, 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 validation. That's pretty simple. Simple, 
simple if you have to write a slide, not so simple if you have to implement this kind of mechanism. But we, so, uh, by the way, we are at the M8 uh, security decision of the untrusted input. And so basically, we are, we are dealing with the, we are dealing with the inter-process communication. And the, with, with uh, Windows Phone 8, we have, uh, from starting from the version 8, we have two different uh, mechanisms. The first is the um, file association, the second is the URI association. We can associate an app with the, an extension or a URI. And basically, you can allow another app uh, or the system to run a specific uh, application that registers the default app with the URI. Um, uh, that's an example. We have a, a PDF reader. A PDF reader uh, uh, register the file type uh, .pdf, or better, the extension .pdf. If you are, not if you are navigating a website or we are downloading with the, our uh, favorite browser a PDF file, uh, the system will simply open the application associated with that, uh, with that extension. So very simple. And basically, the idea is if you can provide to the application some input uh, in the form of a file, in the form of parameter which has provided with the, with the, with the URI, so you, can, uh, you, you, you may attack this info with this, uh, this application. So it's just uh, the way we can specify the, the associations is not, is not cool, but let's move to the Antim part. Antim part, well, once again, we have a series of methods which are invoked when we are opening the target application. So if you had, in, in my example, the target application was the PDF reader, okay? So we have to, basically, the idea is that we have to implement, once again, positive validation in the parsing of, an example, the PDF file, which is then rendered by the, uh, which is open and uh, proposed, uh, proposed to the user. And also we have to authorize the, the, um, the execution of that method. Because sometimes, we can, because sometimes we, we may, um, the, the target methods uh, or the target feature uh, uh, should, may, may require some kind of authorization or uh, we, we, should, we should implement a layer in order to properly, def uh, properly defend this kind of, fun the access of to, to, to these functionalities. Okay, in proper session language, uh, in proper session handling, very simple, uh, we, are, um, we are dealing with some uh, session handlers. So we are an application that authenticates again something. Uh, the the backend uh, deliver uh, a session token, and then we have a problem with the handling during the, the life the life cycle of the. We have a weak or improper life cycle for the the, the, the specific authentication token. The um, basically one of the. Uh, one of the most common problems that I found in my investigation was the implementation for, of lookout mechanism that uh, properly invalidated the, uh, the cookie on the client side. But the code uh, didn't involve the service side mechanism. Just like when you have a web application and you have a fake lookout, they just clean the cookie which are, delivered by the, which are stored by the browser, but does not call any kind of uh, HTTP some slash logout to the server side in order to destroy a server side session. Okay. And so the tips is simply that you have to look for tip and fix. You have to look for the, uh, every use of the, the, the cookies and then uh, careful look if we have, if uh, from one side we have the proper cleanage of the data on the store and if you, a server side logout is involved. Okay, just last risk, very quick. Um, it's the last, but in my, in, very interesting. Well, uh, basically, um, I skipped some slides, but basically we want our app to be able to self-defend from malicious user. Well, we self-defend, we want the app to uh, prevent from external runtime, from um, uh, runtime analysis, uh, from code modification, from, uh, uh, reverse engineering by, once again, the malicious user, uh, application cracking, and so on. Um, I have a nice example, but uh, we have no time, so I have to skip, I'm sorry, but the slide of web paper will be available soon. And so I have just one, a final, I promise, a final note on encryption. So when you, you download from the store your application, um, the application is encrypted. 
The application is encrypted by, by the, the, the Windows Phone store, and the, but it is decrypted uh, during the installation phase. And then the, the, the binaries, the DLLs, just reside on the, the file system in a clear text. So if you can jailbreak, but unlock, it's the proper term in the Windows Phone universe, to lock your device, you can extract the code, decompile the code. But this is not a problem. But um, the nice thing is that with the uh, Apex application, which are the Windows Runtime application, the, the, well, the applications are not encrypted at all. So you, do not, you are not required to have a privileged access to your, to your uh, the device in order to extract, to access the, orig the, the original binaries. You just have to go to the Windows Phone store, look for your favorite app. You know, we are hosting in Italy the Expo, so I just want to try to download the View Expo News, okay? So we have a link, download and install manually. We can download the app, and then we can use our unzipping utility in order to open the zip and extract all the binaries. That was a problem that uh, was also uh, that, that store had in the past, uh, back in 2012, but they still have this kind of problem for a subset of the application. Okay, so uh, what about remediation? My, my best suggestion is uh, always to encrypt your, if you use uh, this tool just like this, we can uh, encrypt our code, uh, uh, obfuscate our code, introduce anti-tampering, anti-debugging mechanism. Uh, Certificate pinning is, is uh, well, we already discussed about certificate pinning, but with the M10, the idea is that certificate pinning is a, a, to, a tool to, a, is utility in order to slow down the analysis by the attacker. We're not dealing with the, the confidentiality or the identity of the server, okay? So, um, final consideration. Final consideration, uh, there is a nice option that allow the developer to prevent installation to SD card. That's because there is a bug in implementation and I'll show some exploitation techniques uh, uh, concerning this, this vulnerability at the Black Hat Mobile uh, Summit uh, in June. So I can share you my secret for now. And as a final note, I'm suggesting to have a look to the reverse uh, engineering and code modification prevention project which is a very an amazing resource for a uh, series of architectural principle uh, in order to secretly design our application. Okay, so take away. Uh, next, next week I re I'm releasing my, my web paper. I also give a talk to the Yak in the Box. The web paper will better discuss uh, all, the, all the API, all the stuff that, you, that I try to show you in, uh, during this, this talk. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for uh, one question. Okay. Um, is there a tool you would recommend for browsing the file system for the app on the phone? Excuse me? Is there uh, any tool that you would recommend for kind of like browsing the file system? Uh, you, uh, the, well, you should have a privileged access. I mean, you have to, uh, the, to unlock your phone in order to navigate. You have to use a bug to navigate the file system. There's also a bug for the Windows 10 phone phone uh, that still exists uh, to, to navigate the file system, but it's not a utility. You can just access your applications and box files. You know, the uh, is isolated storage, uh, ex uh, navigation to extraction to something, something like that. Is one utility provided with the SDK. Okay. But no, it's, it's a bug if you, if you are able to. It's just <laughs> jailbroken device. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sorry, we're out of time, but okay. please uh, contact uh, Luca Thank you very much. During the breaks. Thank you, Luca. Thank you.